Welcome to Everyone's Sunday and Palm Sunday. We are so glad you are here. Let's worship our King Jesus and expect him to do miracles today. Next Sunday is Easter. Invite your family to come with you and get that Easter family photo at the Easter cross. Your kids will have a great time during the 11 a.m. service and move kids with a special Easter presentation. It's gonna be a great day as we celebrate our risen savior. Move groups have started. It is not too late to join one. Grab a group bulletin and contact the leader of the group that you are interested in attending. They will be glad to have you come. Don't do life alone. Four ways you can give to Move Church. With the Tithely app, just choose Move Church Pearl, online at movechurch.com, mail to the Move Church P.O. box, in the giving box at the back of the sanctuary.
Outside of this church, not just in here. But Lord, we thank you for who you are and who you always will be. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In your name we pray. Amen. Guys, we're so glad that you're with us this morning. Now let's do our meet and greet and our giving. So as our church is congregating right now, we just wanted to take a little bit of time and to encourage you, the person watching online, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching this at some other time, we want to encourage you. If you're not at church, we encourage you to be here. We want to see you. We want to spend time with fellowship with you, and we want to get to know you. But for right now, I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about how we give here at Move Church. We give here in person, and we also use an app called Tidely, which you can see at the bottom of the screen. But for right now, let's get back to our service and get back to our worship. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Everyone Sunday. And I am glad every one of you are here today and expecting. Aren't you expecting God to do a miracle today? And I want just to make a couple of announcements. Uh, we have yard signs, and if every home would grab one, they're double-sided, put it out front. These are a great way to get your neighbors interested in church. And it simply says, try church again. And they can go to the website and get all of that information. So if, if you will grab one of those before you leave. Also, if you are here today and you do not have a Move Church t-shirt, and if we got your size, get you one before you leave, okay? We got a few sizes left. So getting you a t-shirt, wear it. We want people to uh, see that, that church name. We want them to come here, don't we? And we, man, we had a couple of great sign holders this morning. How did you like that? Did, didn't it just make you feel good to see those guys out there? We got a couple of new people doing it this afternoon. Liz, really, we need about six or eight more people that you say, we don't want to recruit from another team because if you're already busy, uh, we want you to stay with that. But if you're really not doing anything yet and you say, man, I can do that and I can share some joy uh, to people, I can, I can make them feel welcome in the parking lot. If you can do that, uh, would you see uh, Liz, I think Liz maybe at the family, there's Liz right there, great. Liz, raise your hand again, or Kenny right there, either one of them. And, um, man, help us to share that joy before they even get out of their car. Right. And they're praying. We want you to pray over them as they come in, man, just to feel that expectancy. Amen. Yeah. It's going to be, oh, here, I brought the sign up. Look at there. We got another sign. So we got plenty of signs. Uh, but we are glad to see you today. And I'm glad God's presence is with us. Amen. And I want us to, before we go any further, let's go ahead and ask the Lord to do a miracle for us. If you need a miracle, bow your head, please. 
and ask him, Lord, do a miracle for me. Do that for me. I, I believe. I haven't, I haven't given up on believing. It's been a while for many of you. you hold, you've held on. But today is a good day for a miracle. And why don't we believe him to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine? The Bible says according to his power that's at work. His power is here today. And we're going to believe him to do only what he can do. And Lord, we invite you to have your way. I pray a breakout of your presence in this house. I pray, Lord God, that you would move uh, almost like an explosion, Lord, that miracles begin popping out all over this house. You could do it during worship. I pray you would. Father, we believe you are the healer. You are able and you are willing. Every disease is healed in Jesus' name. Every sickness is healed in Jesus' name. There's emotional healing in the name of Jesus. Father, today, have your way, and we'll give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let all the 
the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice And he wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And oh, we we'll see how great How great is our God Then 
glory to whatever that you feel and I will not deny it the glory that is His one word from you things change to you. Lord, I pray for their soul right now and that you would draw them close to you now. Lord, do whatever you have to do to get them to you. Lord, for the ones that do believe in you and have their hope in you, Lord, just renew our spirits today. Lord, just remind us of how good you are. Lord, remind us of the place you brought us from. A life without you. Lord, remind us today that a life separated from you and a life with you is a big enough testimony to share. Lord, we love you. Lord, we lift your name up. Lord, your word says you are holy, holy, holy. Lord, you are perfect. Help us to place our hope in something so perfect as you. Lord, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Lord, remind us of who you are, how good you are this morning. Lord, we're calling on heaven this morning. Lord, thank you for letting us experience heaven this morning in your presence. Lord, I ask that you continue to reign in this place. Lord, move where the people are watching online. Lord, thank you for just giving us a breath to wake up this morning. Remind us of what a blessing that is. Lord, we give you all the praise. In your name we pray.
come home. Welcome to this house. Isn't God lovely in this place? I did forget to make one of my announcements. I couldn't, held, couldn't have held anything else while I go. Anyway, but this Saturday is the Mayor Pearl Mayor's Easter Egg Hunt, and Michelle and uh, some of her team are going to be setting up our Move Church table there, and we're going to be giving out uh, uh, about 480 of these, um, nice little Frisbees to kids, and um, to, just to get the word out about our church. Uh, who's in the house that's 10 and below? If you're 10 and below, come on, my friend. Come on, come here. Can you come up here? Come up. Owen, come here, man. Oh, I would try to fly. Let me try to fly it to you. Oh, sorry about that. Here we go. Owen right there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I better not fly no more of these. Any other? Any teenagers here? Yes, right here, my man. Come on, I'm going to fly right. No, I ain't going to try to fly. Come on, man. Come on, yeah. Come on, man. I'm going to fly it to you anyway. Come on. Oh, <laughs> Miss Pam, I'm sorry. Ain't nothing personal. Any other teenagers in the house? I'm just going to throw this one out there. Come on, somebody. Boom. <laughs> if you could help out with that, uh, please see Michelle Douglas, and that'll be Saturday. And, man, we would love to have a good representation out there representing our church. Amen. Now, after all of that silliness, this is Palm Sunday, and I can't think of a better way to celebrate Palm Sunday than a personal praise. Would you just bow your head? You feel like it, just wave your hand to the Lord as a thanksgiving to the Lord. Hasn't he been good to you? If you can say, Pastor, I, ain't, I don't feel comfortable by doing that. Well, at least whisper a praise to him. He's been good. He has been so faithful to us. And Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You can rode in in our life, and we're so thankful for all that you've done. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Next Sunday is Easter, and I prefer to call it Resurrection Sunday, and this house will be full then. Please invite folks, though. I'll get them here, and we believe the Lord to give them new life. So do what it takes to get them here. Buy them breakfast, lunch, whatever you need to do, but get them here, and let's see what the Holy Spirit is going to do. Okay, I want to jump in today of the message. This will be the last of this message, but uh, not anything that we will change as far as our faith because it's a great day for a miracle, ain't it? And what I hope is for you as well as for me to create a rhythm of expectancy, uh, a routine, if you will, where we learn to expect God every day where it doesn't matter if we are in church on a Sunday morning or if we're headed to work on a Monday morning, that we have an expectancy. And this is the way I like to tell it. This is the way I say it to the Lord. Lord, you can do anything at any moment. Have your way. And I'm telling you, that is the truth. And I believe we're going to see supernatural things that we've never seen right before our very eyes. How many of you would just like, I want to see that super, I want to see miracles. Not that I would get any glory, but all the glory that would I'd give to God. And we're going to see it. We're going to see it. I'm telling you, there's a day coming. I really believe it's going to be a breakout of God's power in such a way. And I'm going to pray for that. And I want you to pray with me that it happens right here in this house. And, I, and today would be a great day. It's a great day for a miracle, isn't it? So... I want to jump in. Uh, I love this miracle story today. It's one of my two favorites, and it's in Mark chapter 5. If you have your Bibles or your app, it'll be on the screen, of course, beginning at verse 25. It says, and there was a woman who had had, she had had, I think there's two hads there, a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. Anybody can, that's me, huh? That's why they took all my money. I still ain't any better than anybody. And was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus 
and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I can touch even his garment, I will be made well. One translation says she touched the hem of his garment. Verse 29, and immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? I mean, they're blown away by that question. And he looked around to see who had done it. Can you imagine the eyes of Jesus looking through the crowd? Not of anger. And how many of us understand Jesus knew who touched him? He knows all things. He wanted to bring the lady out of the crowd. And today you're in the crowd. But the Lord is ready to do a personal work. He's a personal God, and he's looking right at you, right at your situation. He knows exactly what you need. He's seen you cry out, and he's looking today, wanting to pull you out of the crowd to do something special. I believe that. And he looked around to see who had done it, but the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Now, she could have gotten in trouble, right? She, with the law of Moses, was unclean. She would have to live outside the camp. When someone came close to her, she would have to, Shout, unclean, unclean. She was not worried about that that day. She was there to get her miracle. And Jesus did not turn her away, and she received. And if you want a miracle, you got to stay in faith. You got to stay in faith. So I want to talk to you a few moments, and I believe the Holy Spirit to do a work for us. The strategy for staying in faith. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today that your presence is here. And I know, I know you are. And we ask you to have your way. We understand that you can do anything at any moment. We will not limit you today. Have your way. Lord, do what, pe what needs to be done. You know every need. You know what needs to take place. We don't put our faith in any man. We put our faith in the name of Jesus. And we ask you to do miracles for your people today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Faith, we can make faith so complicated, it really shouldn't be at all. The scripture says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, this is the New King James Version. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It performs two things. It's something that we are hoping for. It's that substance. It is, it is uh, so much further than just wishful thinking. It is hoping and trusting in the Lord. If you're taking notes, you can write these in. Faith is hoping and trusting in God and because of that, our faith is proof of his existence to others. The way faith affects us, because we have total trust in the Lord, our hope is in him, our trust is in him, and it affects everything about us. And because of that, it's an evidence to an unbelieving world who has no hope. And when they see God's people living in faith, serving a God that they cannot see, but knowing he exists because of his work in us and the way we trust him and the way it, it, it affects everything about us, our talk, 
our walk, everything about us, it's an evidence to them. So it's a blessing to us and a blessing to others. Amen. And our faith is a witness. Persevering faith, faith that does not give up, will produce results. I know this may get on some people's nerves, but if you'll just do it anyway, and I'm going to ask you to say that with me. <laughs> Persevering faith, faith that does not give up, will produce results if we don't give up. That's the truth, and I'm glad it came out of your mouth, and that is the truth, and we must speak it out of our mouths. A man named Jack was walking along a steep cliff one day when he accidentally got too close to the edge and fell, and on his way down, he grabbed a branch which temporarily stopped his fall. He looked down, and to his horror, he saw that the canyon went straight down more than a 1,000 feet below him. He couldn't hang on to the branch forever, and there was no way for him to climb up that steep cliff to get a way out. So Jack began yelling for help, hoping that someone passing by would hear him and lower a rope or something. He said, help, help, is anyone up there? Help. He yelled for a long time, but no one heard him. And he was about to give up when he heard a voice. Jack, Jack, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I'm down here. I, I can see you, Jack. Are you all right? Yes, but who are you and where, where are you? I am the Lord, Jack. I'm everywhere. God, please help me. I promise if you'll let me get out of this place, I'll stop sinning. I'll be a really good person. I'll serve you for the rest of my life. Easy on the promises, Jack. <laughs> Listen, let's get you out of there, and then we can sit down and talk. Do everything that I'll tell you. I'll do anything, Lord. Just tell me what you want me to do, okay? Let go of the branch. What? I said, let go of the branch. Just trust me. Let go. There was a long, silent pause. Finally, Jack yelled back, Help, help, is there anyone else up there? <laughs> it isn't the way we do sometimes with the Lord that we want him to do something, but we want him to do it in the way that we can understand. And when we, it doesn't happen the way that we think it should, which you understand is not the best way. God always does the best way. It just doesn't look like that way to us sometimes. And we want to give up when we don't see it our way. And the whole time God is saying, you ask for me to work a miracle for you. Surprising truths about faith. Let me give them to you. The first one is this. Faith is given by God. Faith is given by God. Now, everyone, you can say, has a natural faith, a natural trust. When you stay in a hotel and it's time to take a shower and you grab that bath cloth, you have faith that that housekeeper washed that bath cloth with soap. But you understand that house cleaner is making a minimum wage and they get tired of washing bath cloths. So every now and then they may just fold it back up. <laughs> Everybody's going to be paranoid now. <laughs> That's great faith you have, right? Great faith. And somebody that you don't know that you can't see, you see them in the hallway and some of them look miserable and you're taking that washcloth and you're just, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's natural faith. We have natural faith in many things. <laughs> Some of you eat fast food after you've been rude to the person taking your order. 
You got faith. <laughs> That's natural faith. We're talking about spiritual faith. And I've turned some stomachs already. A spiritual faith that God gives us. And it opens the windows of heaven so you can experience supernatural things from God. God is the giver of that kind of faith. The scripture says, Romans 12, 3, for by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment. In other words, we're nothing without the Lord, amen, no matter how God uses us. Each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Isn't that good news? That God has given each of us a measure of faith? that it's given to us by him. He's assigned it to us. It first helps us to believe on Jesus, and then it helps us to receive through Jesus. It first helps us to believe in Jesus for our salvation, and then it helps us to receive through Jesus. Now, our faith should grow, but this is the measure that God gives to every person that he's created. There's an ability there to receive Jesus. Now, that ought to encourage you when you are witnessing to someone that is so far from God, you think, uh, I don't know if this is going to do any good or not, that God has assigned to them a measure of faith. And when they hear about Jesus, the Bible says that faith is activated. Let me give it to you. So faith comes from hearing what is told, and what is heard comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ. Now, it's activated when the gospel is shared, and they are able to receive Christ for salvation. So faith comes from God. And when we receive Christ, man, the Holy Spirit begins to build that faith in our lives, and we're able to receive everything else God has for us. I'm so thankful that God gives everyone a measure of faith. The second surprising truth about faith to some is this. Faith works for all. Faith works for all. Faith works for all people. As a matter of fact, the people I've shared this with you, the people that had great faith, if I remember correctly, they were not even Jewish people. Two people that I can think of that Jesus said, you have great faith. They didn't even have the teaching. They didn't even have the religion. So faith works for all people. You don't have to have a Bible college degree to have faith that works. Aren't you thankful for that? You don't have to be the preacher nor the son of a preacher to have faith that works. You don't even have to have it all together yet. Praise God for that, to have faith that works. We learned that from the Bible, man, how he used imperfect people in great ways. Faith will work for you as well as it worked for the giants of the Bible, the giants of faith, those that we read in that great hall of, hall of faith is what we call it in Hebrews, that it'll work for you just like it worked for them. The only initial requirements for faith is this, believe and receive. Believe and receive. The Bible says in John 1, 11 and 12, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Now, we understand that obedience does play a part in living by faith. As we saw last Sunday, we must obey the Lord and do his way. But faith really works by believing and receiving and God gives you faith through Jesus, and it will work for you as well as it works for anyone else. You've got to believe that. The Bible says that Elijah was a man just like us. And he prayed earnestly for three and a half years. He prayed that it would not rain, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. And then he prayed again, and then it rained. This is what it says in the book of James that Elijah was a man just like us. Aren't you thankful that God will let faith work for you? That you don't have to have all of these special requirements and special degrees and the special achievements. 
men may not put faith in you, but God does. And he will allow it to work for you just as well as he'll allow it to work for anyone else. The third surprising truth about faith that some is, this is so true, but faith must be present. It's not a one prayer and done. Your faith must be active for you to be able to receive. And the scripture is clear. If you lose faith, you lose the ability to receive from the Lord. You can't, you got to keep faith active. It's got to be present in your life. Hebrews 10 says this, therefore do not throw away your confidence, which is a great reward, the confidence of the Lord, the trust in the Lord, basically faith in the Lord is what it's saying. For you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Yet for a little while, and the coming one will come and will not delay, verse 38, but my righteous one, let me get that verse if I could. But my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. So God, when he gives you that faith and he begins to help you grow that faith, because you know the scripture says without faith you can't please him, so he's giving you faith and he's helping you grow that faith. He might allow a trial to come your way and he walk you through that and your faith is greater on the other side like we've talked about. And God here, the scripture is saying that he will not be pleased if we shrink back. In other words, when we've proven him in such a way, we can't go doubting him after he showed himself. That our faith should continually be growing. And we must keep it in our lives. It must be active in our lives. Verse 39, it goes on to say, but we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed but of those who have faith and pers persevere, excuse me, preserve their souls. And everybody said, amen. Now, we're not of those that shrink back. We're people of big faith. We ain't got time to go back to little faith. Amen? Yeah. That if we're going to step out of the boat, we're going to keep walking. Yeah. Ain't no time to be overwhelmed and looking around crazy and wondering where Jesus is. He's just showed us where he is. Amen? Come on, I'm preaching just a little bit today. And uh, it's time to go ahead and walk. Hadn't he already proved himself? I told the Lord right before I came up this morning during praise and worship that, Lord, I have proven you. I have proven you. And he has, of course, he's proven himself to me, not that he had to, but I've proven him to be faithful. And I've proven him to be the God of miracles. It's not no time to shrink back. It's not no time for little faith. It's not time for shrinkflation. Tell your neighbor, it's not time for shrinkflation. <laughs> Y'all watch the news. Where the package stays the same, but the product gets smaller, ain't no time for that. Your package has stayed the same. Mine's even gotten a little bit bigger, and my face should be growing with it. Amen? <laughs> Did I lose half of the people? <laughs> Bless the Lord. It's got to be present to be receiving presently. It's not enough to have had yesterday faith. That We have to have faith today, faith tomorrow. And as long as we live on this earth, we must be people of faith. And we will be people of faith. Move church people will be people of faith. We began dreaming big a few years ago, and we ain't stopping yet. Amen that we are believing God for great and mighty things, and, and uh, we will not stop that. Amen. Let's look at the story about our lady. Let's learn from her. I love this precious woman. And I can think of this house, that there are some ladies like her, encouraging faith, faith that will not give up. Faith that just keeps going. So let's learn from her. I'm going to read that story again, but I'm going to break it up this time. It says, and there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. Can you, can you sense the desperation that she was in? She had nothing left. She spent all that she had. She was not any better. 
she's grown worse. And some of us can really relate to that story. Some of us just it seemed like God should have done something by now. And you've lost everything. It's, it seems like there's no way out. Seems like what you're believing for is so far removed from where you're at. And I am so thankful that God is a personal God. Jesus is there. He's present. She had heard the reports about Jesus. And this is where her faith came into. She already had hope. Let me give you the first strategy. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Your hope is needed to turn into faith. She had hope even after all that she had gone through and her hope turned into faith. In Jesus, when she heard about Jesus, she heard that there was a miracle worker and he was in the area. After 12 years of suffering, trying and spending all the effort, hope, hope dispersed here, hope, well, maybe this doctor can help you. I heard there's a doctor over here. I'll try, I'll try him, I'll try them. And it kept hope before her. But when she heard about Jesus, her hope was able to turn into faith. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the gospel, by the words, by the, uh, words of Jesus. And maybe that describes you. Maybe you've tried everything else and you heard about Jesus just at the right time, just at the right time. She heard about Jesus. She believed. She put her hope in, in Jesus. I imagine that lady being so gaunt, so weak and frail after 12 years of bleeding, 12 years of sickness. Can you imagine the effort it took her just to get to where Jesus was? And when she got to that place, there she saw this crowd of people pressing around Jesus. She knew the challenge it would take for her to get close to Jesus. Verse 28, for she said, if, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. Apparently that word got out that you can just get around this man. You can just brush up against him and your miracle can happen. And she had heard. She still had enough hope. Now it become faith to believe I can get close to Jesus and I can get my miracle. And you may find yourself in a hard situation today. You've been in for a while and it might have even gotten worse for you. You got to first decide in your mind, do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. It's one thing to be sick in body. It's another thing to be sick in soul. You hear me? It's one thing to be sick in your body and have to deal with that. But it's another thing to be sick in your soul, hopeless. And without hope, you have no faith. Now, the, our hope is not in doctors. God uses doctors. But our hope is in the Lord. It doesn't matter if the doctor is treating you and it's working. I praise God for my doctor. But I understand it was God. It is God. And only anything that happens good comes from God. So my hope is not in a doctor. My hope is in God. My hope is in Jesus Christ, what he has already done for us. You cannot lose hope. You got to hold on to your hope. The hope is your, your source of faith to get to Jesus. You have a reason today to have hope. You have a reason. His name is Jesus. And I've, I've heard some good news about him, haven't you? haven't you? Haven't you received some good things about him yourself? Couldn't you tell some good news about him? And he will help you when no one else can. I'm thankful that, and he does it. He, I mean, he just shows up. He, he does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. And he can turn it around in just a moment. It can look like there's no way out, that you're headed in the wrong direction, and there's no way back. And I'm telling you, he can show up at any moment he wants to and turn it around for you. 
He has not forgotten about you, so don't you lose hope in him. He is in complete control. And uh, yeah, sure, you'll do it a different way, but if you do it your way, you get the small result. He's doing a big result. He's doing it his way so he can have big outcomes, and you'll be forever changed and blessed by it. That's a good place to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll say it myself. The scripture says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. The Holy Spirit, if you are a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is present in your life to breathe hope in you. Hope. I know how that is to come to a church service before I was a pastor, probably since I was a pastor, since I've been a pastor. But I know how it is to come to a church service just because I knew I needed to be there. Really not feeling it. My hope is damaged. I needed God to do something yesterday. And I know how it is to come to a church service just to know, just because I know I need to be here. I don't need to give up hope. And come to a church service with little hope. And then the preacher says something like, hey, would you mind turning around and just pray at your seat this morning? No big fanfare, no calling out and slinging oil and slobber everywhere. I mean, just to pray at your seat. And I turned around, I prayed at my seat, and God give me word. It says, I've seen every tear you've cried. And I have a record of it. And, I, and basically, I'm working it out for you. And I know how it is to get up in that quiet service where it was a, a, just a quiet dismissal, leaving that place full of hope on the inside, knowing it will change. God is in control. This will turn around. I will get a miracle. This will change. And he's not a respecter of persons. He'll do it for you. Don't lose your hope. Don't lose your hope. You just keep walking in that hope. Let me give you the second strategy for faith. You got to get close to Jesus. Get close. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She knew that if she would just touch Jesus, she would be healed. One translation says that, again, she touched the hem of his garment. And Mark 5, picking up on that story, it says that immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, turned around and in the crowd and said, who touched my garments and wanted to bring her out of that crowd, this lady of great faith. Jesus knew. Jesus knew who she was. But she touched him differently. She touched him in faith. And Jesus wanted to bring her out of the crowd. She had no reason to be fearful. Jesus wanted to do a personal have a personal interaction with her. And aren't you glad that you got a Savior that wants to be close to you? He wants it to be personal between you and him. Yes, he uses people. Yes, he'll use the preacher, the evangelist, the doctor. But it's really, really between you and him, isn't it? But he wants you to be close to him. Revelation 3.20 says it so beautifully. It says, Behold, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, fellowship with him, commune, and he with me. Isn't that a beautiful picture? I remember, I believe it was in, in our house growing up, the picture of Jesus knocking on the door. And that fellowship that he wants with you is a personal. He wants to be close to you. He wants to do a personal work between you and him. It's a personal Savior. I can't tell you that when you get close to Jesus, you'll get your miracle immediately like this lady. But I can tell you this. Everything you need is found being close to Jesus. Everything you will ever need 
is found being close to Jesus. I can picture this lady. She touched the hem of his garment. That means she had to get on her knees, pressing through. And I'm telling you, to be close to Jesus, we have to get on our knees in prayer. Not, not saying every time you pray, you need to get on your knees. I'm saying in prayer, symbolically. You have to press through to get close to Jesus. Yeah, I know you're busy. I know I'm busy too. And I know there's things pressing, things that, man, just pull us here, pull us there. But I'm telling you, you got to get close to Jesus. We got to press through and just get, if, if it's just touching the hymn, he's, he's, going to, he's going to be closer to you than that. But if it's just to be, be close enough to him, everything you need is found being close to him. And we could get close to him in prayer that we have an invitation. And sure, there are times that I pray just because I know I need to, and I'm, I have to work my way through it. I have to press in. Sometimes it takes me 30 minutes to get in, a, in an atmosphere of prayer. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But it's worth it because once I have that pressing through, Jesus is right there ready to commune, and he wants to be close to you. He wants, he wants that, that personal relationship. It's more than just the miracle. Yeah, he'll do miracles for you. But see, you can forget about a miracle. As a matter of fact, it's likely that you will. And, and I've said it before, you can be healed and still go to hell. But when you're close to him, you have a fellowship with him. That's the answer for everything you and I need. The third strategy for staying in faith is you got to be ready to face obstacles. Oh, I wish it was an easier way, don't you? What preacher said, another level, another devil. I call it next level devils. That little chihuahua devil, he ain't gonna work no more. Got to bring out the pit bull devil. There's pit bull devils that will try to take a bite out of you, you, you know. There's going to be obstacles. It's, it comes with faith. God will allow obstacles. The Bible says that's the way our faith grows. But we also know the devil will try to trip you and I up. And here this lady, when she got there, she saw this crowd. Don't you know the thought was there? You see that crowd. As a matter of fact, the disciples said it. Look at what the disciples said. You see the crowd pressing around you. They saw, she saw the crowd pressing around Jesus. So much so that they thought it was strange that Jesus said, who touched you? Everybody was touching Jesus. And when she saw that crowd, don't you know the thought came into her mind? Oh, you might as well give that up. I mean, I can go to a Christian concert and see a crowd. It's like, oh, this is going to be miserable. Look, I'm going to sit out here, all these people touching me. <laughs> and she had a need bigger than her inconvenience, right? Bigger than the obstacle. And she looked at that, that crowd and she said, I'm getting to Jesus. Can you imagine her saying, excuse me? She might have started off saying, excuse me. I got a feeling she was shoving and pushing later on. She was, it was like some of us going to the buffet line. Come on. And there's one last piece of chicken. And you know how you do. I mean, you coughing and sneezing on people, trying to part the crowd. And you are getting there. And she got there. She got there. Pressing through those obstacles. And with faith, you got, just got to understand, you're going to have obstacles. But why does it have to be so hard? It is going to be hard. It's called faith. It's trusting in something. So God, of course, for him to do something for you. It's going to go against your, your mind. It's going against what other people say. You're just going after it because you know God is willing and he's able. Amen? Would you stand, please? Obstacles, obstacles. Two greatest obstacles you're going to face. I don't have this in your notes, but let me just cover it real fast. 
as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, two greatest obstacles you're going to face when it comes to faith, the first one is fear. The second one is discouragement. They are cousins. They got the same daddy, though. Fear and discouragement. I really believe probably in this room, 25% of us are struggling with fear. And I would even say a higher percentage is struggling with discouragement. And it's one thing to say that I'm struggling with it. It's another thing to give in to it. Struggle means I am going to fight this. This is an obstacle, and this will go down in Jesus' name. Discouragement and fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Hear me. I'm going to give you real, just real quick, how do you overcome fear? How do you get, you know where it comes from? The Bible says God did not give you a spirit of fear. It's a spirit. And the way you can overcome fear, the Bible says perfect love casteth out fear. So you understand, God loves me, and he is in control of my life. My life belongs to him. I am not my own, and he loves me, and that will dispel fear out of your life. God loves me. He's doing what's best for me. Oh, I know, well, but what did the doctor say? Yeah, it doesn't sound good, does it? But God loves me, and he's going to take care of me. See, that gets rid of fear. Discouragement. Discouragement is the other thing you're going to face. He, the devil is going to make sure, especially when you're stepping out in faith, he's going to make sure you battle discouragement. How do you overcome discouragement? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. That is joy that is not happiness by itself. Happiness is based on circumstances. Joy is based on the word, the truth of God, that he is doing a good work in you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The Holy Spirit within you brings joy to you. You just got to walk in it. Well, how do you do that, Pastor Bobby? I don't feel it. I don't either a lot of times. And this is the way I do it. Uh, feeling down, got bad news, tired of fooling with this. Yes, yeah, never going to change. And you do whatever you can. It ain't going to be good enough. You see the enemy, how he does? Yeah. Yeah, other people, it'll work, but not you. You are inadequate. But wait a minute. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Wait a minute. I'm a child of God. Wait a minute. I have the Spirit of God in me. This is the way I activate. I, I, this is the way I activate. Lord, I just give you praise today. I thank you, Lord. You are good and faithful and just. Man, when you begin to praise, joy just comes. And the devil has to leave. And I'm telling you, as soon as you start feeling that discouragement, start thanking the Lord for what he's done, giving him praise for that, and then giving him praise for what he's going to do in your life. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and lift our hands. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for what you've done. I give you praise. Right now, discouragement is leaving. Discouragement is leaving. I give you praise. You have been good. Yeah, it turned out to be different than what I thought it would. But, Lord, you know better than me. And I am thankful that you are in control of my life. And I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for joy in our lives. The spirit of discouragement has to leave. The spirit of fear has to leave. You love us more than we could ever know. You have not forgotten about me, Lord. Somebody needs to say that. You have not forgotten about me. You know exactly where I am. You know exactly what needs to happen. And I give you praise, Lord. Ah, thank you, Jesus. And we're going to stay in faith. We're going to stay in faith. As a matter of fact, it's a great day for a miracle. Would you shout that with me? It's a great day for a miracle. Let's do it again. It's a great day for a miracle. Hallelujah. Now, if you need a miracle, would you raise your hand again? You need a miracle in your body. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is not a show. This is not, uh, again, but Father, this is a personal thing.
And I pray miracles would break out. We're not going to give up believing. We know on whom we have believed, and he is able. Jesus, you're the author and finisher of our faith. All the promises of God are in Christ are yes and amen. We believe miracles, sickness be healed, diseases be healed, healing come. Body, you come in line with the word of God that says we are healed in Jesus' name. Father, those watching online, I pray healing. I pray miracles in their house. You can do it. We believe you to do it. And today would be a great day to do it. And, Lord, we will believe whether it happens today or it happens tomorrow or it happens 12 years from now, we're going to believe in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Mm. Thank you, God. All the glory belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just believe, I believe, I believe, don't you? I, I've only shared this maybe one time, maybe it was during the second service, and I'm not trying to drum anything up, but I know the glory of God is in this house. And there are times that I see smoke. Uh, I, I one time called somebody out for vaping. I thought they were vaping in the house because <laughs> there was so much smoke. And I can't say I see it every Sunday, but sometimes there will be smoke in the rafters, in the in the, in the ceiling. And um, uh, that Sunday, I actually smelled a, a fragrance with it. I mean, it was vanilla. It was amazing. And I just really believe that's the glory of God that shows up. But I can tell you what I'm praying for. I'm praying for that glory just to fall down among us. And I really believe when I see that cloud move down, I, I see smoke today. But when I see that smoke move down, I think miracles are going to break out. Oh, I believe, there's no telling what's going to happen. He can do it before that, and don't get hung up in all that. I'm just saying that God will show it to you, and he'll give you such a hope in believing that, uh, man, you believe for supernatural things. Amen? Thank you, Move Church, for being a church of faith. Thank you. Thank you for being a church of big dreaming. We have some things that, man, we're hoping to happen this year. I believe it's going to, it's going to reach the lost. I won't get into details right now, but it's really going to, I believe, you be praying with me, that we're going to reach the lost, and um, it's going to create a problem for us sooner than we need it, that we're just going to have to do something else. And I just praise God for that. Uh, that's a problem that we can deal with. We'll we'll. God's got a, 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 a response to that. He's got a, a, a way to fix that. But I'm telling you, we're going to believe. We're going to believe for, to be able to reach souls for the kingdom of God. Amen? Now, let me bless you before you leave. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Ah, thank you, Lord. May you turn your countenance toward us. Lord, I'm going to pause just for a moment, and may it be like this little lady that says, who touched me? Somebody touched me in faith. And I pray this week that we would begin touching you in faith, that we would touch you in ways that, in faith that we haven't before, that we would have a confidence and trust, Lord God. And Lord, I thank you. You'll turn your countenance upon us and give us peace and those miracles. Amen, amen. Don't forget your yard sign before you leave. God bless. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We we'll hope you do your part by sharing this live stream so that everyone can see. And we can't wait to see you back here next week.